<laughs> hey, how are you? Good, good, you? good, good. I was saying before you came in that the, the waiting for you to join, <laughs> waiting for the guests to join, that was the worst part of Instagram Live because it never goes smoothly. You know, you'd think after we've gone, uh, after we've been working from home for so long that it might be a little easier, but right. maybe it's not. How everybody talks to each other, right? <laughs> So, so how are you? How you talk about working from home for a while? You've been in quarantine like the rest of us for four months. How are you holding up? Uh, doing pretty well. Um, I'm trying to lose my quarantine weight. Um, I, I wasn't running like I should have, and I've packed on a little weight. So I, yeah, I think some funny. of us are experiencing that. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people can can relate to that. And right, we'll we'll talk about. We'll talk about your organization in a second, but I want to talk just about, you know, something that we can all relate to as runners. It's harder to get out the door now, right? Because yeah. we don't have our running, we don't have our running groups to, to, to meet up with and our running buddies to meet up with. How have you stayed motivated and what has been your, uh, what's been your go-to when you want one of those quarantine indulgences? Uh, I, I, I think it's just um, knowing that summer could actually start at any moment and I don't want those 10 pounds to show up. So um, just knowing that it could sneak up and the pools could open up anytime soon and we might be on the track soon again. So you, you never know. So I think it's uh, knowing that it might sneak up on you. So that's motivated me and tried to keep me away from some of the indulgences a little bit. So, so you're in charge. You you lead up one of the bigger running groups in Atlanta. What is your what's your running background? Were you a runner in college, runner in high school? Did you come to it after school? What's your how'd you get into this? Um, yeah, so I actually I I ran at a, a small NAI school, Tennessee Wesleyan. Um, I mean, it was a really tiny school, uh, maybe fifteen hundred kids at the most. Um, but I ran through high school. Uh, I ran through college, um, but I think my true joy was actually get, being able to coach kids at the collegiate level. So after I graduated, I actually had the opportunity to coach at my alma mater for a couple years. Um, and I really did enjoy that. Uh, but I, I think it was one of, those, one of those things, I'd been there for so many years. Um, it's not fun as an assistant track coach, you know, living on a stipend. So after a couple of years, it just, it was time to move on. Um, so I, uh, my, my experience is primarily in distance. Um, so I always ran the 5k and up and I actually finally just completed my first full marathon at the New York city back in November. So I'm a little late to the game on that. <laughs> it's a great race. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think you're, you, the marathoning is something you do after you go through all the other distances, I think. I think I was yeah. probably six years out of college before I ran my marathon. So yeah. um, how did you end up in Atlanta? You're a Tennessee guy, right? You, how did you end up here? Um, so, you know, like I, I said, I, have, I was coaching and I enjoyed it a lot, but I didn't, I, I knew that I couldn't live on a stipend forever. Um, and then I guess since it's Pride Month, I can say, you know, I, I had recently come out to myself and I just didn't want to stay in a small college town for very much longer. Um, you don't have a lot of community there. People know your business. Um, everyone your age is still in school. And as a coach, you can't, I mean, you can't hang out with anybody to that capacity. Um, so at, Atlanta, I know Atlanta has a rich history of both running and civil rights history. Um, so it was an, an easy draw for me to come to the city. Um, so, you know, running wise, yes, I, I've enjoyed finding my own running, my running, you know, communities and getting to know a lot of people that way. But also just opportunity wise, I mean, Atlanta has, has so many opportunities available. As you mentioned, it's Pride Month, and, and we were talking before you came on about the virtual Pride 5K. But tell us a little bit about for people who who are watching or might watch this later who don't know about, about front runners. Tell us about who front runners are here in Atlanta and, and nationally. So front runners is an international running group. Um, 
there are a lot of clubs here in the U.S., but then also abroad. Um, but it, it's the the first group was actually out in San Francisco in the 1970s, um, and it it was just a way for people to start meeting that wasn't well, it wasn't at a bar. Um, and it's hard to imagine right now uh, in 2020 that we we couldn't be this free. You know, people. It was very much an underground existence. So Front Runners was one of the few, uh, one of the few groups where people could actually go somewhere besides a bar or a nightclub and be with other people in their community who have a similar experience or they might have a similar story. Um, so Front Runners was one of the first groups to actually offer that. Uh, Atlanta, Atlanta's was one of the earlier groups. Um, so we're right at about 30 years at this point. Um, and we used to meet at the old library across from the Hunter Art Museum. Um, that was where they first met. And then Front Runners also met um, in Piedmont Park for a long time before going to John Howell Park. Um, so the, the Pride Run has followed closely. Um, and it, it would have been our 30th year if it wasn't for COVID. And, and, and I want to give more details on the, on the virtual version of that in a little bit here. But, but so I was at the, uh, the Juneteenth run and I saw you there uh, last week. And someone mentioned to me that Atlanta's chapter of Front Runners is actually one of the fastest growing in the country. What do you attribute that to? And, and have you seen that rise in membership over the last couple of years? Yes, I, I'd say it's grown. I mean, that's, that's pretty accurate. Um, a couple of years ago, I think our membership was maybe at 20 or 30 people. Um, but today I looked and it's, it's close to 100. Um, and of course, you know, I think with every running group, COVID has put a damper <laughs> on what our plans were for racing and group runs and activities. Um, you know, I, I think it's, uh, Atlanta's a growing city. Um, more and more it's getting recognized for its civil rights history. Um, Atlanta's, of course, running, you know, running city USA. Um, so lots of people who enjoy running. Uh, they might have, like myself, also come here for opportunity and acceptance. Um, so as more and more people move here from other parts of the country, uh, it's just a natural growth. Um, but I, I think a large part of it are the, the people who are heading up a lot of this stuff. Um, there's a great group behind me who's really doing a lot to make sure things go smoothly, um, put initiatives up. Uh, I, I think before we started growing, people might not have known we existed. Um, but, you know, we won it like the Olympic trials. I said, no, that doesn't happen that often. We have to have a spot on the marathon course. And of, of course, we had the best music on the marathon course. So. Yeah, people have talked about that. In fact, I just saw in the chat, somebody said, oh, you got to ask them how he got that many people out at the trials. And, and I've heard from people who ran the trials, people who came out the trials, that you guys had one of the best cheer zones. How did you get people to be so excited about, about such a niche sport as marathon running? <laughs> so there's, a, you know, like I said earlier, it's an international group. So there were people who were going to race the next day, um, either in the full or the half marathon. So they were here for the race anyways, and they, they were from other front runners chapters. Uh, quite a few came from San Diego, New York, uh, Washington, Fort Lauderdale. Um, so it was just a great opportunity. They wanted a fun place to cheer. Um, luckily, there's no shortage of DJs in our, in our LGBT community. So I was able to get a good friend of mine to come in. Um, it was a little windier and colder than we had expected. So I think that it got people moving a little bit more too. And to us, the Olympic trials, the torch was lit. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> yeah, the whole thing was lit, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, it was such an exciting day. And it's, it's sad that that was the, the last, you know, big hurrah before COVID kind of, you know, set in. But I think we're all talking about it in. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, 
I want to ask you two questions about one about, about membership and then about your involvement. First, how how does one become a member of Front Runners? Is it is it as easy as going online, showing up at a run? Yeah, so we always encourage people to come try us out. Um, you know, we we we're having group runs twice a week on Wednesdays and Saturdays at John Howell Park. Um, so if you're not familiar where that is, it's close to where the Beltline meets Piedmont Park. It's really close to that. Um, but we do have people of different running abilities. Um, you know, some people might just be starting out. It might be their only cardio day of the week. Uh, we actually had two or three members go to New York this year. Um, one of our members, it was about to be his, I think his 30th Boston Marathon this year. So you have some serious runners, but there, there's a long string of um, different, different abilities and capabilities. Um, some people even joined us just because they wanted a healthier outlet to get to meet people. Um, so that's literally how they got started running, was they heard about our group and wanted to try. Um, membership is pretty simple. It's just signing up online. Um, we've been trying to get more gear and things as, as a... Uh, Time has gone on to people who sign up for membership. Um, we do social events all throughout the year. Uh, we always have a barbecue um, at least once a year. So uh, we we do we have a lot of fun. Um, some people it becomes their own little friend group. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the new guys. This you know they weren't sure about Atlanta before they found out about us. But um, after finding front runners, they've enjoyed Atlanta and they want to stay. So just like anything else, it becomes your your running group becomes your friend group. I think that's every running group I've been in in this city. There's right. really no better way to get to know people. Right, because you're running with them for about 30 minutes or to an hour, and right. you don't have anything else to do except talk to each other. So um, you make right. friends pretty quickly. And how did you end up as president of the, of the organization? Were you a member before and just wanted to get more involved? I was a member. Um, when I, when I first moved to Atlanta, Front Runners was one of the first groups I joined. Um, you know, I, I don't think I was as involved until, I'd say 2017 is when I got pretty involved. Um, and then, you know, the, uh, the opportunity just arose that they needed somebody to step in and start heading the group. Um, they heard about my coaching experience. They know that I'm... I'm a little bit hard-headed, um, but I, you know, I, in the end, I, they, they know that I'm going to do what's necessary to get the group to grow. Um, mm -hmm. Because even, even though the world's more accepting now, I think there is still a, a niche spot um, for a, a running group like ours. Um, and, you know, I, I do, I run with a lot of running groups here in town, and I have running friends from different avenues. Um, but front runners really it's become family and i I think they knew that that's how I felt and that i would I would let it uh, flourish and I think important to point out you, you said something that, that reminded me that that front runners is open to allies as well yes, so we do have um, it's open to anybody you don't have to be in the LGBT community um, even if you're just an ally you know, we more than welcome you. We do have several allies who run with us on a regular basis and even go to our events. Um, and I've noticed that at front runner groups all over the place, um, not everybody has to be in the, an LGBT person. Um, we just, we, we generally have a good attitude. We're, we're not very intimidating. Um, and I've kind of seen that constant across all the front runner groups I've been to. As a mission-based organization here at Atlanta Track Club and, and, and in Running City USA, how how does how do the, the various groups of Running City USA help front runners support their mission and, and help you guys achieve the mission that you're trying to to achieve here in the running community in Atlanta? I'm sorry, could you repeat? Just wondering how you know. I, I think we we all have a, have similar missions. We want people to get out healthy and active. How does right. Running City USA? How does Atlanta Track Club help front runners? Uh, support their mission and, and spread their and spread their mission in the Atlanta running community. A, a lot of that's just, I mean, it's the huge running community. Um, 
I mean, Atlanta Track Club does, they put on such great events. Um, and they do a lot trying to get, you know, trying to get people out there and start a healthy lifestyle. Um, and that, and I think that's really a similar mission. So when we, when we, when we wear our front runner hats or maybe our singlets to some of these track club events, um, people who already love the Atlanta running community might realize, oh, well, there's a, another subset group, you know, there's another group within this amazing community. Um, so we really, I, I really think it's just, we all, we all have this, you know, similar missions, like you said. Um, and we, we just try to build on top of that and say, you know, uh, we have, we have those missions, but in addition to that, um, some of our members went through a, a very, a big experience earlier in their lives. Um, so that's, I, I think that's where part of our, our uh, mission comes from. I know Pride Month is very different because of COVID. Uh, <laughs> and everything we're doing is very different because of COVID, but it's also, it's seen, it's, it's different because of the climate right now and, and, and the awareness people are having over uh, racial injustice issues, the Black Lives <laughs> Matter movement. And I know that Front Runners members, at least the ones I've been to, have been very active at going to, to some of these racial equality runs or, or runs that are protest runs that are calling attention to that cause. Is that is that part of the is that part of the club's mission, or is it just is it just that your members happen to be really in tune with that with that kind of messaging? Well, I think um, I would say it it does go in line with our mission. Um, you know, Pride, Pride was actually started in 1969 with the black transgender woman. Um, and a, a lot of the Pride, you know, the first Pride parade was a march um, up in New York City. And they literally, they saw the success that it, Atlanta's very own Martin Luther King had with the Civil Rights Movement. Um, so a lot of it does go hand in hand. Uh, it wasn't necessarily a scheduled thing that we've you know, front runners have gone to these events. Uh, I think it's that most of us realize of injustice is injustice. Um, inequality is inequality. It doesn't matter uh, really the color of your skin or who you love. Um, so we're, we're always going to be against any kind of injustice. Um, so we'll be at these equality runs. Um, we'll be at pride events. Uh, and on that note, this year, uh, the thing that really struck hard with us was Ahmad Arbery shooting. Um, I mean, he was he was out on a run. It's, it's what we love to do. Uh, but after that, frontrunners did decide we wanted to donate part of the Pride Run proceeds. Um, we were looking at social justice reform groups, and we actually we wanted to donate a portion to Track Georgia. Uh, which is a fantastic inner city youth track program. Um, it really focuses on uh, after school activities like track, giving them that opportunity, really pushing for education with these kids. Um, so we, you know, we do, we have our bread and butter mission of trying to raise money for HIV uh, charities. But I think given what's happened this year, we, we felt it was necessary to divert some of that money. So the race is still going on. People have five days left to, to join. Tell us how to be part of the, the virtual, the Pride Virtual 5K. Right. So it's uh, it's pretty simple. If you can just go to frontrunnersatlanta.org, um, there is a symbol and a link there for the Atlanta Virtual Pride Run. Uh, and guys, the best thing is nobody has to watch you. It's a virtual race. So if you're not in shape from quarantine, um, you can do it on your own. You can walk it. You can run a mile, take a 10 minute break. You know, nobody knows except you and your watch. Um, so once you register, it is virtual. You just uh, use your favorite app, whether it's Nike Fit, um, Fitbit, Garmin, Strava. Uh, you can just upload that time. And it's actually ranking people now. Uh, we focused on fundraising this year. So every participant will get a, a Pride Run mask. It's a rainbow mask, uh, has our logo on it. You can pick it up at Big Peach or we can mail it out to you. 
of, I think it, then there are two more levels of fundraising. I think at $75, you get a t-shirt. If you fundraise 150, you get a medal. Um, but again, it, it's just, it's virtual. Um, it's more, it, I think it's more interesting seeing how people do this. It's a social media driven race. Um, it's uncharted ter you know, territory for a lot of us. And how has the success been so far? Have you had a lot of people sign up? I think we're, we're nearing 200 people for a virtual 5k. I didn't know what to expect. Um, but I mean, the fundraising, the fundraising with that number of people is about to reach what we hit last year for 600 people. Um, and of course our sponsorships got hurt, but it's just the fundraising. Um, and we're so gracious to the people who signed up for it and are fundraising for us. Um, and I think I've, I've run the virtual 5k a couple of times now with a uh, big peach midtown and several, several front runners. And, um, it, it's fun watching them post it and, you know, it, it's different. We've been cooped up for three months, so it's, it's entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> but your role, you know, you describe putting on a virtual race and, and what you do in, in this position as president of front runners, it's, it's a lot of work. I know it's a labor of love, but it's a, it's a lot of work and it's a volunteer position. How, how, how many hours a week are you logging for front runners and do you have some help? <laughs> uh, uh, it's fewer man hours than if I was actually putting on a, you know, a physical event. Um, cause I mean, you, you have to know, I mean, for our 5k, it's so nerve wracking. I, I can't even imagine doing peach tree. Like, <laughs> I don't know how you guys sleep. For like a month out. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, it, it, it is extra work. Um, but honestly, it's a labor of love. Um, there are some people who, who need, who need that help. Um, and I think COVID has made, made those needs even greater. Um, so I think it's knowing that there's a need people who are really sick and on top of that may have lost their jobs due to COVID. Um, it just drove us even more. Uh, it would have been easier to just cancel it this year and just say that that's it. Um, but we knew that the need was greater and that those, those places were bringing in less money. Well, again, five more days to register. You go to right. the website address again. My browser just froze, so I can't, I can't see what it was. <laughs> so it's uh, frontrunnersatlanta.org. Um, and if you follow us on Facebook or Instagram, we actually have a tutorial on there. So it's a video tutorial showing you what to do, how easy it is. Um, and your money really does go a long way. Um, so if you, you know, if you have, if you have the means, it's, it's, it goes a long way. Well, we got a couple of minutes left. I got to ask you some personal running questions. What's, sure. what's your favorite place to run in that area? Uh, <laughs> um, so I would say in town, in town has got to be the West side belt line. Uh, it's just a lot less crowded than the East side trail. It's more scenic. Um, you get some rolling hills. You see different things. Um, and then not only that, Busy Bee Cafe is close by, so you can undo the entire run. Um, but then I would say for, further out, I would have to say Kennesaw Mountain. Um, you know, starting from Cold Mount, I think it's Cold Farm. Uh, running on those trails is just beautiful. You don't realize you're in the middle of the suburbs. Yeah, and you're going straight. And you're going, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask you favorite post-race uh, restaurant indulgence, but it sounds like it's Busy Bee. Yeah, so Busy, yeah, Busy Bee, when I go to the West Side Beltline, um, they've been in business for 70 years, and it's uh, Dr. King and several leaders used to meet there, but it's, it's just, it's soul food. I mean, it, you need to go run another 10 miles after you eat there. But it's, it's totally worth it. <laughs> What's your yeah, favorite Atlanta favorite Atlanta area race besides the Pride Run? Uh, you know, Pe Peachtree really is an experience. Um, 
it's just amazing seeing that many people on one day um getting that cold towel at the end the the beer at the end <laughs> um <laughs> But, and then it's even seeing the elite guys. I mean, just knowing you're in the same race as some elite, I mean, Olympian runners too, that's, that's pretty inspiring. Um, besides Peachtree, uh, I really like the Heart and Souls 5K. I mean, it, it's, it's fun, you know, it's, it's early in the season. It's, it's a fun one to do. And you guys, your group runs are meeting up now twice a week. You're back, you're back to group runs. So we do want to start back in July, um, okay. and I know we're, we're going to we're going to follow really strict guidelines, um, and it will be as a kind of an at, at your own risk. Um, if you don't feel safe, don't do it. I understand. Um, if you're sick, please please stay home. Um, don't come out if you're sick. Uh, but but I have looked at what other groups are doing around the country and around the world. Um, I'm looking at the mayor's, you know, her reopening plan, and uh, we're, we'll be drafting and publishing those rules as soon as possible. Um, but we, we do have a lot of members. For the race, you get a mask. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, th there are several members in our group who work for the CDC or, that, or their doctors, um, and we have heard that running, ru running tends to be safer. You're outside the virus has a harder chance to survive outside. Um, but we still, we want to follow any social distancing guidelines possible. Well, we, I know I, I'm with you and I'm, I look forward to getting back to Coop Runs. It was nice just to be out there a couple of weeks ago. It was the first time I've run with anybody in weeks. So months. Right. Uh, Thomas, thank you so much for, for taking the time to, to talk to us tonight and uh, check, out the, yeah. check out the virtual Pride Run for sure. You got five more days, so sign up. It's for yeah. a great cause. Thanks, Thomas. Hey, thank you. Have a good evening. Bye.